Welcome to the Spheres of Spirit with Natsi Myers, aka the Lady of the Light. Natsi will discuss the everyday magic and wisdom of spirit which surrounds each of us, waiting to be discovered. She will share some of her remarkable orb photos, proving that our angels, guides, loved ones in spirit, and even pets surround us and guide us in our physical world. During this episode, Nancy will discuss one of the many spheres or aspects of spirit available to us based on her orb photography. She will also share a special channeled message from her guide, Leonini, and do an oracle card reading to help guide you along your personal spiritual adventure. And now, here is your host, orb photographer, author, medium, and speaker, Nancy Myers. Hi, welcome to the Spheres of Spirit. I am your host, Nancy Myers. I do want to thank you for joining me um, as I talk about this uh, topic today. Um, I really appreciate your support and your, you spending your valuable time with me. Um, today's my 34th podcast. I can't believe it. But when I started this podcast, um, and my son, Robbie, who is in spirit and who works with me, told me to call it the Spheres of Spirit because there's so many different aspects um, of being on a spiritual path. But today, um, I wanted to get back to the orbs themselves. If you've been following me, and I thank you for that, um, I've had many guests, many different topics, um, but I kind of wanted to talk about the orbs. And it's the orbs of just this year, that either I haven't had time to present on the show, or I haven't done a topic about this particular kind of orb. And when I started this podcast, I promised that if I got new things to share with you, um, that I would do it. So this is today's show. So here we go. So I have been doing orb photography now for nearly 14 years. And I use the same camera. It's always on the same setting. It always has the flash on. It's a digital camera. I do not use my cell phone, mainly because cell phones have too many filters. They filter out the infrared, which is what the orbs need to manifest. But, um, and I, of course, am always the same photographer. So I'm telling you this because throughout the 13 years, the orbs have changed. They have progressed, they have increased, they have um, changed sizes, um, colors, patterns, and faces. And really the faces are my niche. Um, You probably have heard or maybe you have even captured orbs yourself. Um, But for me, how spirit works with me is they will show me a face and Now it's to the point, and I'm going to share some of these with you today. Um, It's almost like a pencil drawing. At first, it was only I who could see it. I would tune in and I would use what I called my spirit vision um, to see the faces. But spirit has helped us out by continuing to clarify and increase um, the image. They're like focusing. And I so appreciate that because... Nothing warms my heart more than when I see it, but then I show it to my client and they can see it too. Because after all, the reason why I do this work, as my son has asked me, is to present irrefutable evidence, proof that life is continuous. We do not lose contact with our loved ones. The bond of love is eternal. So um, one of the services that I offer here locally Um, I'm in Southern California, is what I call um, orb mediumship circles. And I will have um, maybe six to eight people um, come over to the house. And um, yes, it is a mediumship circle, but with an extra because each person who attends my mediumship circles, they get uh, an orb session or I take their pictures. Um, You know, when I started doing this work, Um, I said, spirit, please don't ever leave me hanging. I don't want to be in front of a client, take a picture and not get an orb. And I have taken hundreds 
of uh, clients and spirit has never let me down. So I so appreciate that. But um, I wanted to show you a couple pictures from some of these circles this year um, because they're quite remarkable. So what I do is um, I'll, before everybody gets here to my house, uh, I'll set up the room, I'll meditate, I'll set the intention, and then I'll just take a few photos because sometimes spirit shows up early. Um, spirit watches us. They know what we're doing. They're a big part of our life. So, uh, you know, the loved ones sometimes will know if you're going to go to a medium and they'll show up before you get there. <laughs> I've had that happen to me. But um, so anyway, I took a picture of the room and I could see an orb. Now, this one isn't as clear. You're going to have to trust me a little bit on this one. On my camera, I can see it clear as day. But as I say, each time I transfer it to a different medium, um, because the images are so subtle, sometimes I, I lose a little definition. But um, trust me <laughs> on this one. So um, if we could bring up that first picture. Thank you. So there you see my fireplace on the left. And um, I saw the orb on the fireplace there. It's a, It was a beautiful powder blue orb. And so I went, oh, spirit is here. So I zoomed in on it and I could clearly see a man's face. Now the, the half picture on the right, um, I tried to outline his face. So he was an elderly man, probably in his late sixties. He had a full head of hair, but it was silver. Um, he had um, a goatee um, and very nice looking man. And so anyway, my, my sitters arrived and we did the, the meditation and um, I took everybody's pictures and I did get orbs and I started to describe to the, to my circle, I said, okay, before you arrived here, I said, I captured this orb. Here is what this man looks like. And I described him and I'm looking around and, and I said, can anybody take this? And a lady uh, sitting across from me, now I hadn't read her yet, so I didn't know who this orb belonged to. So she raised her hand and with tears in her eyes, she said, you have just described my husband to a T and he just passed two weeks ago. I don't know about you, but I got goosebumps when, when she said that. So here he's, he's already knowing, he already knows the ropes. Oh, she's coming. I can reach her through this orb medium and let her know that I made it safe and sound to the other side. She was so comforted by this photo. And, um, I went on then to give her a few messages from him and, but you know, things like this just continue to amaze me. So, you know, sometimes you hear from mediums, um, oh, well, you shouldn't go to a medium or try to contact your loved one for six months. They need time to, to a um, acclimate and to get used to it. What my son has told me, mom, there is no such thing as time on the other side. So uh, six months is in our head. So they are, I mean, I have brought in people who have literally passed earlier in the day. So if they want to, if they have a reason to come through, they will. I just wanted to pass that along. So, um, now, uh, another attendee, it just so happened, at, at the same circle, um, she's a dear friend of mine, and she is um, my doc grouper. And so I took a picture of her, and when I zoomed in, I could see an image in the orb. Now, I tell people, I, yes, I capture humans, but I've also captured animals, reptiles, birds, <laughs> Um, uh, things like possums, even a goldfish. Um, so when I zoomed in on this orb, I could clearly see a dog. So Chris, if we can bring that picture up now, if you look at the orb, I didn't outline this. I just left it raw. If you look at the big black dot in the middle, that's his nose. 
and right below is his open mouth and his little tongue. And then maybe the rest of his face and ears will come into focus for you. So this golden retriever was one of her favorite clients, if you will. She took care of him for a very long time. And she has this picture on her desk. And he had just passed. And he just came through to let her know that he was okay and that he loves her too and um, that he's doing just fine. So, you know, I, I just love that. Thank you, Chris, so much. I hope you all could see that. Now, I have to tell everybody, um, this is going to be a very visual uh, podcast. I have, I think, 13 pictures to share with you today. They, You can see them again, of course, here at Home Times Radio. Also, um, on my website, uh, theorbconnection.com, you can go back and, and study them and zoom in too there. So for those of you listening on the radio, I will do my best to describe them, but I encourage you to maybe take time if you're interested and look at the pictures afterwards. So um, at another circle, um, I had, uh, I think I had 10 people that day. It was a busy circle, but, um, everybody got an orb and I took a picture, uh, of this one lady and there was a big orb by her and I zoomed in and I went, Hmm. Now people ask me, uh, you know, what do you get? What are the orbs? And as I've just said, you know, they can be our loved ones. They can be animals. Um, they can be symbols. They can be UFOs. <laughs> they can be uh, ascended beings. Um, but also they can be our guides or teachers. And um, and I think this is uh, a, maybe a teacher of hers. So I zoomed in on this orb and I looked and I went, oh, and right away I'm thinking, this looks like maybe the 40s, 50s, black and white kind of feel to it. And I looked and I went, oh my gosh, I can see. And if we can bring that that up, Chris. I go, he looks like Clark Gable. Now the, the raw orb is in the middle and his head is tilted just a little bit to the left. So the bottom is, of course, Clark Gable, who, yes, was, you know, the black and white screen star, um, I guess, of the 40s and 50s. And at the top, I tried to outline him as best I can. I'm not a graphic artist, but at the top, um, it, it helps you orient your eyes. But one of the things that made me chuckle is um, Clark Gable was kind of recognized for his big ears. He had really big ears. And um, I can see his ears in the orb. And so I looked at the lady and I said, do you have a connection to Clark Gable? And she said, yes, I love Clark Gable. I read about him, all things Clark Gable. I watch all his movies. And I said, well, here he is. Uh, I believe that he knows that and he's here number one, to thank you, but also to let you know that you can call on him. So, I, you know, I just love that. Um, sometimes when I get photos, yes, it's people who had just passed two weeks ago, but sometimes it can be people, as I will go over in a little while, who have passed millennia, millennium, thousands of years ago. Um, so anyway, she really appreciated that and she really cherished that. Just the fact that how much she loved Clark Gable, that there he was acknowledging. So I, I thought that was so much fun. Okay, um, my next slide is um, uh, a, a familiar friend of mine, um, John Lennon. John Lennon has come in orb form uh, in my backyard, uh, I think three or four times. And each time there's always a significant reason or date or something like that. So it was close to Mother's Day. And what I do on Mother's Day for orbs, uh, as and uh, this picture is under episode 20, I usually will post, repost a picture that I captured of Mother Mary. And then I do the lyrics of let it be. And I like the lyrics for Mother's Day because it says, 
When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. So it's kind of like, to me, those lyrics are saying, I know you have troubles, but let me let give them to me. I will help you with that. And what better reminder than on Mother's Day? So I was getting ready to do that. And I went out and took photos and came back and I looked and there's John Lennon. And I went, all right, why are you here? <laughs> I did not know. I had to do a little research. And can we bring that photo up there, Chris? And again, I did not outline this picture. And hopefully you can see that because I can even see his glasses. You'll see kind of um, three straight black lines. Um, if you see, look at the, he's between two of them and you can see his colored glasses. But anyway, so I said, well, why are you appearing? Why, why, you know, why now? They released that song on May 8th. Um, May 8th when, um, 1970. And it just so happened that Mother's Day then fell again on May 8th. So he just came in, I think, to say, yeah, thank you for doing that, but I acknowledge it. But um, give me a little credit. I think Paul gets a lot of credit for that song. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you can see him. Um, I, I just adore it when when Mr. Lennon shows up, I think he was, thank you, Chris. I think he was a, a very, uh, spiritual, uh, advanced being, um, one of the beings that had come in to start planting the seeds to move us along, um, at a great sacrifice. So, um, anyway, I, ho I hope you do that. I mean, could see that. Okay. So another spirit circle. No, sorry. This was a private client. So one of my services that I also do is I offer a private sittings and um, I will take pictures of the sitter and then do a reading and, you know, an angel card reading. So um, I had a, a, a younger woman and um, I took pictures of her and then, then I started doing the reading and I looked at the orb and I went, hmm. And I went, this is quite remarkable. So um, we can bring that up, Chris, as I'm talking here. Thank you. So I looked at the orb. And again, I didn't outline this because I want you to see this. I want, I want you to take a minute and look at this and I'll describe it. But I looked at the orb and I could see the woman. She's off to the right side just a little bit. But the hair is undeniable. And I put a picture of Judy Garland because that's who I thought the orb was. That's the name that came to me. But in the orb, you can see her short hair. She kind of has the pompadour kind of look, you know, on the top um, with a few wisps of hair coming down. When you look at the face, you can see the high cheekbones. Um, I hope you can see that. But to me, that was undeniably Judy Garland. So here's another um, celebrity, you know, from the 40s, 50s. And so I said to my sitter, I said, do you have a connection to Judy Garland? You know, sometimes I have to ask it that way because sometimes they can be descendants of these people that I'm, that I'm capturing. But she looked at me and her mouth dropped open and she said, I am reading her biography right now with tears in my eyes. She said she was so mistreated and had such a horrible life and so taken advantage of it. Of She said, it just makes me feel horrible for her. And so here, Judy Garland in spirit felt the love and the compassion that this young woman who didn't know her, but is reading about her, was sending. And Judy Garland responded, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for caring. But also, I think, to let this poor woman, um, as kind of a healing moment, to say, I'm okay. I'm, I'm now healthy, happy, and whole. I'm surrounded by infinite love. Please don't upset yourself. 
because this woman was really pained by what she was reading and just had a, a just um, a horrible visceral response. And so that one just, again, made me feel so um, in awe. You know, like I said, I have been doing this for 14 years and spirit never, ever um, ceases to amaze me, you know, but they're not willy nilly. I have said this before. There is always a reason why spirit comes in when they do, whether it's uh, like Judy Garland to acknowledge that we were thinking of them, whether, oh, and I forgot to tell you, with Judy Garland, it just so happened that I read this client on the day that Judy Garland passed. It was um, June 22nd, 1969. And she was only 47. And if you've seen the later pictures of Judy Garland, I would have guessed she was in her 60s, but that's what the barbiturates and what Hollywood did to her. So she showed up on the anniversary of her passing. So again, you know, spirit doesn't do anything willy nilly. It takes advantage of everything, every which way to get a message to us. So um, I, I just, again, I just love that. Um, now, as you know, I think if you've been following me, um, I travel all over the world and I had just gotten back from a trip to Portugal. Now I did a show on uh, my trip and, uh, or part of it and some of the symbols and things that were downloaded me to me because it was all about the Templars and their symbology. And that's why I went to Portugal. Um, but we did a couple of side trips and um, that didn't have anything to do with the Templars. So that's why I didn't, didn't show this particular slide um, on that show. But um, there is um, uh, a cathedral and the cathedral, let's see, it is called um, the Chapel of Bones. And it's in Avora, Portugal. And it was based on um, another cathedral in Milan. But um, we were warned that when we went in, that there's this whole section that contains bones. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> so, but here's the backstory because when I walked in, my mouth dropped open and I, I just, and then you can feel, uh, the power when you do this because, um, it was mm, 16th century in Avora. There were as many as 43 cemeteries. And when they first put these cemeteries in, they were on pretty prime land. Well, not wanting to condemn the souls that were buried there, when the king, the current king said, oh, well, I'm going to build a, a new palace right, right where that cemetery is, <laughs> I guess, because they could do that then. So the monk said, okay, we still want to honor those souls. So they um, exhumed all 5,000 bodies and put them in this church, the bones. And I want to show you um, a picture of that. We're getting close to, Chris, is it okay if we break a little early um, before we go into that? Because once I start on this story, I just wanted it to go. Okay, so let's break. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit more about these bones. We'll be right back. Om Times TV. The story told in Entering the Light Fantastic, Discovering Life After Life Through Orbs, is about Nancy Meyer's spiritual and emotional rising from the devastating ashes of loss caused by the sudden and unexpected passing of her son Robbie. Just like the legend of the reborn phoenix, Nancy's life purpose and focus was transformed. 
With the help from her son in spirit, Nancy found herself providing proof through orbs that our souls do not die with our bodies. In her second book, Encircled by the Light Fantastic, A Deeper Journey into the Light with Orbs, Nancy continues chronicling her path of gaining spiritual knowledge and expanding acceptance of what is possible while traveling to many sacred and ancient sites around the world. She shares these experiences with you along with her photographs of remarkable spirit encounters. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. It's lunch time yet. It's time. Donating pet food is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Okay, welcome back. So let me reset this. So they wanted to, um, the king wanted to build the palace on the cemetery and the monks, um, not wanting to, to have these souls condemned, decided that they would build the chapel and relocate the bones. So when you walk into this room, um, it's rather large and you can see that the pillars, you can see the walls, um, and every time I look at this, I get goosebumps, are lined with bones. Now, they say it's 5,000 um, people, and they've come to that because that's how many skulls that they counted. So uh, these are leg bones, arm bones, rib bones, um, neck bones, finger bones. They're all over that room. Now, if you're sensitive to energy, you can, uh, you can imagine what it feels like to walk in that room. And, um, but the, why did the monks do this? This is to me was such a strange way to honor these people, but here's, here's what, what I read. And, um, they said that they thought doing this in, in turning these bones this way would provide Avora, the city a town noted for its wealth in the early 1600s with a helpful place to meditate. Hmm, I don't think I'd want to meditate in there. On the transience of material things in the undeniable presence of death. Um, what they thought was there were too many rich people and they were too much into the materialistic world. And they wanted to bring the people back down to reality. In fact, the sign over the door says, we bones are here waiting for yours. In other words, we, we all end up at the same place, no matter how much money that you have. Kind of when you look at it that way, it kind of takes the spookiness and the eeriness and the ickiness out of it. But what a powerful statement that these monks wanted to make. So it must have been pretty bad <laughs> for these people, for these monks to go to this extreme. So as you can imagine, I took photos and I'm showing you this one. This one you might want to zoom in, you know, when later, but you see the orb uh, closer to the right on the pillar. 
And so I thought, gosh, I wonder if I can get anybody from the 16th century, would their energy still be here? And so I took, took photos all over and I did get some pictures, but this one's the clearest. So when I zoomed in on it, and if we can go to the next photo, Chris, do we have it there? Okay. Thank you. Now on this close up, you can see the skulls and the, and the leg bones and the thigh bones and all that. Um, but there's the orb. Now, when I looked at that orb, I went, well, there's a man in a tall hat with a mustache and a beard. And I thought, wow, I wonder what what the native dress was back then. Did they really wear tall hats? And I found this um, statue. It's a, a little bronze statue from the 1600s. And they said it, it could represent either a soldier, and that's how their soldiers dressed, or the local population. But you can see the tall hat, the mustache, and the beard, and it's exactly like the face in the orb. Um, again, you know, here, you know, what are we, 500, 400 years later? And, and that energy was still able to say, yes, I'm here. And I walked in there with a lot of reverence and mm, prayers for those who were interned this way, even though their bodies are not there. But um, I don't know, was this soldier coming back to say thank you for, for noticing us, appreciating us, recognizing us, remembering us in this way? So anyway, that was just one of the, one of the kind of different ones. I hope I didn't freak you out too much on that one, but that room was, was very heavy to be in uh, because there's children, there's men, there's women, there's everything. So um, now uh, we're going to switch gears here a little bit because one of the things that I captured and I did a show on this and I did a show on UFOs. And I'm not sure what the number was, but if you go to here or on my website, you can find it. And the orbs that I get that um, are UFOs are different. And then I also get a type of orb that I call, I named ribbon orbs. And these are orbs that in the time it takes my shutter to open and close, which is fast enough to stop a hummingbird's wings, the orb will move across my camera. And it, the orbs flash in and out, in and out. And when you zoom in on these ribbon orbs, you can see the individual orbs and sometimes. So I have captured uh, several more ribbon orbs and I think two more UFO orbs. So I want to bring that up, Chris. I just grouped these all together. So you can see in the upper right-hand corner there, um, to me, it looked like I was looking at the windows of a ship. <laughs> so I put that one in there because it's not really a ribbon, ribbon orb because all my ribbon orbs are white. This one had blue. Um, then the picture on the right uh, top, uh, I showed you a picture that I captured near Mount Adams that was very much like this. It's kind of a half moon is shape, uh, crescent shape on its side, if you will. Um, that's not an orb. That's something else. <laughs> and then the bottom two um, are some of the new ribbon orbs that I capture. Now, people say, oh, well, that was something in front of your camera. I, I keep all my uh, chips uh, um, memory cards from my camera. And when I capture stuff like this, I always make sure to keep the image that I took before, then the image, and then after. Because if it's in every single picture, then yes, something is on my camera. But if it's, you know, in the first picture, nothing, then the ribbon, then nothing, 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 then it's not on my camera. So um, I love the ribbon orbs, sometimes they, they'll form themselves into letters um, or different shapes or different symbols. Um, I just posted something on my Facebook page um, 
you want to go to uh, the Orb Connection. And it was about uh, a sort of light that I just captured. And then I looked it up and Excalibur. And um, I posted the message and it was very timely. So, but ribbon orbs are one of my favorite uh, kind of orbs. Okay, so um, the next type of orb. Now, I said in the beginning that I don't change, my camera doesn't change. Oh, I forgot about this one. Let me tell you this one. Um, we can bring this right up, Chris, because this is this is just quick. Uh, the summer solstice. I love the solstices. Uh, I think magical things happen on the summer solstice or the fall equinox or the winter solstice. Um, but I went out and I said, okay, you know, tonight's the summer solstice. Do you have anything to show me? And I took this picture. Now that's, the, this was the meme that I made out of that. But it was this beautiful, bright yellow orb. And now yellow is one of the rarest colors that I capture. Blue is probably the most common white, um, green, um, pink, uh, purple, um, yellow, Yellow, orange, and red are harder for me to capture. But here it is, the summer solstice. I just asked Spirit if they had anything to um, tell me. I get this beautiful uh, yellow orb. And so I said, okay, thank you. Happy summer solstice to you too. So anyway, that was just a fun one. I just wanted to put that one up there. Um, but again, so the orbs, as I started to say earlier, um, constantly change. Um, when I first did them, all they did was concentric circles, and then those have changed. Um, again, on my website, I have a whole tab that says types of orbs that I've captured. Well, now I'm getting new types, and this just started this year. So if we can bring that up, Chris, because these are, to me, amazing. And to me, they look like I'm looking through a um, 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 microscope and looking at cells and, and what's going on in the cells, or are they getting ready to split? So I call these my cell orbs. And um, last night and the night before, I got a whole bunch more, and I'll be posting them on my Facebook page again. Um, but they're unique. They're beautiful. I haven't quite figured out the message yet, but again, it's just another, um, a, another way that the orbs continue to evolve. Um, I, I say that, thank you, Chris, very much. Um, when people ask me, what are orbs? Um, you know, are they angels? Are they loved ones? Are they, um, ascended masters? Are they this? Are they that? Yes, 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 and yes, and more. Um, I don't think we know everything that they're capable of or everything that they are yet. So um, I keep an open mind. And again, spirit doesn't disappoint. Now, this next one I, I want to talk a little bit about because this is something that's happened to me, is happening to me. And I've been told that it's going to start happening more. And what the, a couple mediums have told me is, Nancy, pretty soon you will be capturing apparitions that literally step out of the orb. And I went, oh, okay. So there have been some things that are starting to change. So a friend of mine, um, actually she's my teacher, told me about a book. She goes, you know, do you know about who Billy Hope is? And I had to admit that, no, I've never heard of him. Well, here is his book. It just came out. And it's called uh, Billy Hope, Psychic Photographer. Now, what he would do, this is in the 1800s. He would take pictures, uh, you know, on the old plates, the old style cameras. And there would be white mist or if you want to call it plasma clouds or whatever, you couldn't see it with your eyes, but it would appear on the plates. And these developed into such um, a high resolution that it looked like these spirits were literally sitting next to the person he was taking a picture of. 
it was kind of like a forerunner of what I do. <laughs> I went, this was back in the 1800s. Spirit really had to work hard because, you know, with digital cameras, I can take, you know, hundreds of pictures at a time. These plates had to go in and then processed and out. But, um, but the fact that his were not orbs, they were plasma or, or, or mist clouds. And I went, wow, that would be fascinating to get. So some things have been happening, but I wanted to show you this, these next two pictures. So if we can bring up the next, oh, oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, this was another type of orb. Um, and I put this on here because this is the first time that I captured a two-tone orb. Um, you can see the color at the top is different from the color on the bottom right. So I just found that again, stunning. And there is a face in there and it's my dad. <laughs> so he showed up. My dad had a mustache. He wore, you know, the, the wire rim glasses. Uh, he's appearing as he did in his twenties, which he likes to do. My dad is a big ham. Um, he's appeared uh, more times than anybody else in my orbs, but he thought, I'm sure that this was pretty cool that he could show up like this. So <laughs> thank you, dad. <laughs> so again, a new type of orb. So, okay. So here is the picture that I got. Oh gosh, maybe two weeks ago now. I'm taking photos again. They all, most of the work is done in my backyard after the sun sets and I'm calling in spirit and I'm taking picture, nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom. There's that thing. And I can see it on the back of my camera when I take the picture. Then I go, okay, I need to debunk myself. Is there something on the lens? Is there something in front of me? So I take the picture over and over and over again. And the picture before and after, there's nothing there. Um, so these are things I can't see with my eyes. Same thing with this photographer in the 1800s. No one could see these images until the camera picked it up. It had to be revealed. They were hidden realms. But they um, presented themselves um, on the film when they were ready. So I was so excited. So I took my camera and I'm cleaning the lens and I, and I moved to a different position and I said, okay, you know, was this a fluke? You know, and then I took this picture and if we can bring that up, Chris, and it's almost like it, and now it moved and it got really bright, um, changed form a little bit. Uh, this one kind of reminds me of like a Casper, the ghost, the friendly ghost, but, um, so again, the picture before nothing, this picture, picture after nothing. So I'm hoping, I'm sure, and if, thank you very much, Chris, for that. Um, if I ever do capture an apparition like, like Billy Hope did, or, you know, if uh, it steps out of the orb, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> so I will share it with you on this, on this uh, show. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to tell you something because I kind of have a special treat today. Um, normally on my show, and as the introduction says, I, I talk about the orbs. Uh, then I share a, a card reading and a message from my guide. But today we have a special message and I want to set this up for you a little bit. So I sit in a circle, a mediumship circle. Um, with my very dear friends. We've been doing this for almost, gosh, three and a half, four years. And what we do when we sit in circle is we either will do mediumship readings for each other, or we actually channel, just like I channel the Anini, but I get other people. <laughs> I probably have, I don't channel the Anini in this circle. I will get people from the past and famous people. I probably have 30 or 35 people so far that I've channeled and they will usually come in people that I've never heard of. I brought in one time the man who invented hot dogs. I didn't know anything about him and he gave me evidential medium, uh, evidential information and then a message for us, well really for everybody. One day I will do do a, a book um, and share those. So a couple of weeks ago, we're doing circle and, um, 
and someone very, very special came in. And what I do is after I, I record all our sessions and afterwards, if I've, if I'm channeling someone, then I will type up the transcript of the actual channel. So that's what I want to do with you today. I want to read the transcript exactly how it unfolded. So here we go. This is, oh, and my light just went out right when I said that. Okay. So, oh, I'm back on again. Um, this was July 5th. So um, this is me talking. When we were in meditation, I know I had a powerful spirit because I could feel him on my face. And I know I had a man in spirit. The first thing that he showed me was an easel and a blank canvas on it. I thought maybe one of you had someone in spirit who was a painter. Nope, he said, nope. So I said, okay, then who is this? And the spirit started talking and he was um, a little bit gruff. And um, he said, um, oh, and is a very uh, terse and short in his responses. So, um, I said to him, um, it's, oh, um, and, and it was like, he had, he had no patience for, for me asking these questions. And I felt like he would not tolerate stupid people. And so he says to me, do you think I stood in front of that canvas and immediately created a masterpiece? That's not how it works. And then I stopped and I said to my my friends, I said, guys, it's Leonardo da Vinci. And I said, okay, am I really talking to Leonardo? He said, you're listening. I said, okay. So I'm going to start with what he already told me and see where this goes. And if he takes over me and starts channeling. So um, he says right away, masterpieces take planning. It is a trial and an error. I would first sketch, erase, would stand back, oops, excuse me, sketch, erase, sketch, move, expand, shrink, add, reposition, and then I would paint. And then I would stand back and I would hate it. I would start over on top of that painting. I would redraw, re-sketch, re -sketch, reposition, and paint again. To create a masterpiece takes time, but it also takes trial and error. It's a learning experience. You sometimes expect your lives to be perfect masterpieces. That is not how it works. Your lives are layer upon layer upon layer of sketches and paintings that did not work. Does that mean you failed? Only if you stop. Only if you settle. Only if you say that it is good enough. That is when you fail. The masterpiece truly is never attained. You cannot be angry with the process. You have to forgive yourself for that phase, that idea, that picture that you have in your mind. It is what you knew and what you know at the time. It is your past self. Your past self no longer exists. You are in your present self, working towards your future perfect self, and you will never attain it until you leave this world. Most people don't understand that. It is in the striving, it is in the learning, and the redoing, and the not settling that grows your soul. That is the way it is meant to be. If you reach perfection in this world, you are no longer of this world. It's not going to happen. People think I was the master. I'm not the master. There is only one master. But even with the talents that I had, the talents that were given to me by my master, I never attained mastery, and I knew that. Think not that you have reached the goal of mastery, because if you believe you have reached that goal, you are lost. And then he was gone. That was it. And I was flabbergasted. I have channeled some other people, but again, I talked about people that have been gone for millennia. And can we still contact them? And, um, you know, when I do this 
you know, I, I always go, oh, that didn't really happen. No, that didn't happen. So a couple nights after I channeled that and I was still trying to decide if it really happened or if it came in my head, I mean, came from my head, I went outside and I said, before I took my ore pictures and I go, hmm, okay, Leo, if that was really you, show up in an orb for me. <laughs> and I took a picture. Chris, can we bring up that next picture? And there he was. Uh, the picture on the left, hopefully you can see him. Uh, you can even see the hat. Now the picture, of course, there isn't pictures of Leonardo, but there are statues. And so this one is in Italy. And so the, the orb, he appears in the orb, just like the statue, even the hat. He has the hat, the very long beard, and the long hair. Hopefully you can see that. I tried my best to outline it on the orb, but again, that's just to help you orient your eyes. So what does this mean? <laughs> it means, number one, that spirit hears us. They are responsive. They are here to help us. And that life is ever, it never ends, right? It just goes it goes on. We never stop. It is eternal. That's the word I was looking for right there. And, and those who have served here before, like I said earlier, Leonardo was a, um, a master, a, a higher being, no doubt, but he is still helping humanity from the other side when, you know, and in many different ways, I'm sure I'm not the only one. In fact, I know I'm not the only one who channels Leonardo da Vinci. Um, he has come through many, many, many mediums, but, um, for little old me to do that and to have that, um, that message, but then to complement it with the orb, um, for me, that's proof. And I, I hope it is for you too. Okay. So that was our special, um, message today. Next time I'll have one from Leonini. So since I've been talking about revealing the hidden realms um, through my photography for the card reading today, I actually have a deck. It's called Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. <laughs> so I pulled this deck to read for you today. This is a pretty powerful, pretty strong um, deck. So you, some of you, I always pull with the intention that this will resonate with all listeners. So I, I hope it does. I hope it's not um, too much. <laughs> but so let me shuffle. And I always ask that this message be um, hopeful, helpful, and healing. And I ask that um, I can interpret it for you and that it serves you. So, and I might have to read the book on this, which I don't normally do, but these messages are so in depth and so strong, but let me see what I can do here. And it depends on, on which card that I draw. I, so let's see. Okay. So it wants to be this one. Um, hmm. Okay. So it says, by the way, this is the back side of that. It's kind of, I, I like that. It's kind of as above, so below kind of image. But this one call, it says, the keeper of the scales, fairness and balance. So I am going to read the book on this one so I don't get it wrong for you because um, sometimes I can get the message for you directly, but this one I am going to read. Um, let's see, it is card number 38. Because these are so deep, I don't want to mess it up. Okay, so it says the law of harmony is enacted when the keeper of the scales comes to you as an ally. Align with her as the law states, making conscious choices that create balance in your life. Important, when she's talking about balance today. When you do, you also magically align with the abundance of the universe and the powerful forces of synchronicity. This creates conditions and possibilities that lead to the fulfillment of your higher intentions. Um, so for, for those who are listening today, um, keep a good balance in life. 
you know, we have to live this life. We're earth beings, but don't forget your spiritual side. We have to be serious at times, but don't forget your fun time. We have to learn and read sometimes, but don't forget your creative side. Okay. Nurture all parts of your soul and you will attain that balance. So I want to thank you for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed these uh, photos. I will do it again at the end of the year if I get some more amazing photos. But um, I want to thank you again, and I will see you next time. Take care now.